So here's the film breakdown about why KJ is so successful, at least was so successful last year in Browse's offense and why I think he'll continue to, to find that success uh, this upcoming year. But I want to take a few minutes and just briefly, briefly talk about the RPO offense, kind of what that is, what quarterbacks fit best in that, then talk about uh, why KJ was able to, why KJ, excuse me, was able to, uh, to find so much success last year. And then we're going to really dive in the film. Probably got 10 to 12 minutes of just actual film breakdown. I want to do somewhat of a, a, of a deep dive. So, um, let's go ahead and just talk about the RPO offense real quick. So the RPO offense is, most people know this by now, uh, it's a run pass option, right? You're really trying to put the defense in a position to make a wrong decision. And in doing that, you have an open receiver or you have a handoff or you have a, a, a quarterback keep. And so a lot of people will probably think that this works best with a quarterback that can run. And while it certainly does help, it actually works best with a quarterback that can pass, right? Because like in any offense, regardless if it's an RPO offense or not, if you can have some shots and complete some balls downfield, that's really going to open up the run game. So a quarterback that can pass and a quarterback that can make the right decisions and the right reads because the RPO offense is largely just a numbers game, right? Depending on who is in the box and who's not in the box, largely determines do I keep it? Do I hand it off? Do I throw it, right? So it's kind of a numbers game. Then from the numbers game really comes the reading part of the offense. So uh, in KJ's case, and not to mention, I don't want to say, I don't want to say before I get hit, I don't want to say that a RPO offense, you don't need to, to have a quarterback that can run. It certainly does help, right? But I think as long as you have someone who's a, a decent athlete, someone like a Joe Burrow, like a Tua, who are good athletes, but they're not speed burners, not going to run you over, but you have someone that can at least use your legs a little bit, then you're in good position or you're in good shape as, as a uh, offense. But if you have a quarterback like KJ who can push the ball downfield, but shown to be very accurate, and he's a big, strong, physical, just a great athlete overall, then that makes things even better. So real quick, let's talk about KJ and why he was so successful. Uh, actually, we're going to look at the film right here. So successful, but I think the biggest thing was because he could freaking throw. He can pass, right? So many people had questions about him coming into the season, even the first few games, but you got to let a guy develop. You have to give him opportunities to develop, right? So once he had those opportunities and a few games and a few bullets in the arm, live bullets coming at him, uh, he showed that he was, a, he was a more than capable passer. And in doing that, the run game really, really opened up. And when you go back and, and watch RPO, um, schemes and RPO uh, film, it's easy to see the, the plays that are missed. But I think as a fan, having the mindset, you're not going to get every read right. Take it from baseball, for example. If anyone's a baseball fan, if, if a batter goes three of nine every series, every three games, they get three hits, you're pretty damn happy with that, right? So I'm not saying a quarterback, you, you don't want him to go three of nine making reads. But at the end of the game, if you ran 20 RPO plays and he's 15 to 20, 14 of 20, that's probably going to lead to a pretty good offensive performance that day. Uh, so just don't tr try to get out of, the, out of our heads as fans. Like we don't want to remember just the five or six reads that he missed um, because they're going to be plays that you miss. There's going to be RPO schemes or RPO decisions that you miss. At the same time, you could have a good play and the defense could just make a, a good play on the ball, right? So the ability to actually run the RPO is huge, right? But I think it largely stems from the ability as a passer, which KJ has, and then becomes, okay, now the ability as an RPO actual quarterback. And then in KJ's case, the ability to make plays with his legs when uh, everything breaks down. So that's kind of in a nutshell, real brief surface level description of the RPO offense. And we've, we put out videos before kind of going into actual detail of the RPO offense. So if you're interested, interested in that, let me know. I'll link it below. Uh, but today I want to look at KJ's ability as a passer. So we broke down the Alabama and Texas game. You're going to see the Alabama portions are actually kind of pretty good breakdowns in the Texas portions uh, just so it didn't get too lengthy or just kind of like 30 second clips of the actual play. So the the first kind of uh, the first third of the breakdown is going to be just KJ as a passer, straight passing plays, nothing with nothing to do with RPO, just straight back passing plays. The second kind of, um, I guess, section of the video is going to be the RPO scheme. It's going to show him run the RPO uh, very well, whether he's giving it, whether he's keeping it, or whether he's throwing it. And then the very end is going to be KJ being KJ. I like to refer to him when, when nothing happens, when things are breaking down, he just makes a play. So I know I said it was going to be brief at the beginning. I've already talked too much. Let's go ahead and dive into the actual breakdown of what makes KJ so successful in Kendall Browse's offense. But before we do, like always, just consider subscribing to the channel if you like any quarterback-related content. Let's get into the video. So here's a great third and 11-ish type play uh, that KJ throws a hell of a throw down the middle of the field for a first down. Not a lot of room for error. Very accurate downfield. Burks does the rest, right? But look at the throw here. Let's rewind it real quick because it's throws like this 
that allows the offense to run and allows the offense to stay in the field, right? When you're in a bad situation, like the ball's out right now, up top safety, DB, other nickelback, a linebacker, can't remember from the start of the video, but you see there's not a lot of room for error, right? Well, this is a great definition, a great example of KJ being able to fit the ball into a very tight window. And when you, when you, when we watch the behind the center angle, uh, you'll see how small that window really is. But great anticipation by KJ, great read, and then a great accurate throw. Right? It's the anticipation and the read that leads to the accurate throw. Boom! Right? Look at that. Uh, not a lot of room for error, safety coming down underneath backer right here. Uh, KJ throws it to space, allows KJ to get it and get the first down. But a great throw by KJ and a good example of his accuracy. So he here's a play, uh, a shot downfield from KJ, which was initially called touchdown, then I believe was was called down the one-yard line. But not one-yard line, but I'm going to call it a touchdown because it was... I think it was too close to be overturned. Regardless, let's break it down because it, it was a good play. A lot of good things shown in just this one play here. Come on, come on, come on. So it's a good job by one KJ just reading here, being patient, stepping in the pocket, and delivering a good ball downfield, right? Three things in one. Good read, step ups in the pocket, and is patient. So we're going to see it looks like they start with two up top safeties. There's really only one because he's taken the back, coming out of the backfield here. So you know you got man coverage here, some type of scheme coverage here with one up top safety. Good job blocking, steps up in the pocket. Initially was looking towards Burks here, but they were covered. Now you see, I believe it was Thompson running open downfield. KJ with a good ball downfield. Boom. So takeaways from this play, patient in the pocket, steps up field, and goes through his progressions, right? Watch the progressions here. Uh, Burks is not open. He's looking for Burks, then comes off Burks. Like he's looking for Burks the whole time, right? Looking, looking, looking. Steps up. He sees Thompson right now. Feet get set, good throw, boom, that's a touchdown in my eyes. Let's go ahead and give KJ one more touchdown on the season. So here's one of my favorite plays of KJ <clears throat> and of Burks just on the whole season. Third and one, back shoulder throw, Burks makes a play, boom, touchdown here. This, th th this type of throw here is what separates good quarterbacks from great quarterbacks. Um, being able to make this throw, let me scoot back just a little bit, I apologize. Boom, right here, right. So third and one here. This takes some big balls to do this, um, to, to complete this throw. Just to throw it, not much less complete it, right? Nothing to really break down here. Top coverage up here. Your best guy against them. Take him every day. Uh, not really a 50-50 ball when you have Burks, right? So good job at KJ there. Uh, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna not convert on third down, let's at least not convert, giving your best guy a chance. So a good example of a downfield throw, uh, and then taking what the defense is going to give you here. In this case, it's a shot downfield to your best playmaker. So plays like this is why it was so hard to to stop KJ in Arkansas's offense. So. Um, Hell of a catch by Burks down here. Let's watch it, then break it down real quick because this is a RPO here. Um, it should fall under you know an RPO play technically. So we're gonna see Bama actually get seven in the box. They got seven here. You know you can't run it. Six v seven. They bring someone. They brought. They bring this guy down here. You got one up top safety. Even though Burks is their best player and the safety's kind of shifted that way. You still have strong side over here with three potential route runners. So he has to shade a little bit. KJ knows he's not handing the ball off because it's 6v7. He's going to take a shot, right? So again, 50-50 ball, but they completed a lot of these balls downfield. And the, when you can complete balls like that, I mean, that just helps open up the running game more and more because the defense is going to be a lot more hesitant to bring seven in the box again because they're able to complete passes like that. And you can say it was all Burks, sure, whatever you want to say, but still it was the read by KJ and the ability to just take the shot downfield uh, that led to Burks being able to have an opportunity to catch the ball. But again, when you complete balls like that, the defense is not going to want to have seven in the box. So had to show this conversion. I think it was like, what, 4th and 11? 4th and 10? Yeah, 4th and 11 conversion against Alabama. See, no one's open initially at the, uh, the uh, start of the snap. No one's open initially. M moves in the pocket, eyes downfield. Boom, throwing to, I think, Knox right here, right? Yeah, that was right there for a first down. That's another big-time throw uh, in, in, a, in a really big situation, right? So let's go ahead and watch it from here. So you can see his eyes remain down for the whole time as he moves in the pocket. So it's more than just kind of chunking it up, right? There's a lot of good things going on from the quarterback perspective. Going through reach, steps in the pocket, gets his feet set. Then you can kind of see Knox's feet right there. Not a lot of room for error. There's a DB. Boom. First down there, big time throw. So another good deep throw by KJ. Just a straight drop back throw here. Notice his 
His, his patience in the pocket lets the play develop and then delivers a good ball downfield. Pressure comes, steps up, boom, downfield. No, he's open. Still a great throw from the right hash to the left side of the field, right? Right, kind of even with the numbers. But again, watch the patience in the pocket, steps up. Texas brings people to, see out here, just steps up. That's a long throw to good job in the pocket, delivering a ball downfield. This is a great example of his ability to push the ball downfield. Another straight just drop back throw here. You're going to see KJ look briefly here, come back to the receiver on the left side of the field, makes a good throw. Let's go ahead and just watch it here. Again, not, not trying to break it down too, too much detail, just show an example. I know he's open, still a long throw. Looks to the right side first, then comes off the right side and goes to the left side. So let's watch his progressions and then the ability to make the throw as well. Boom, good job there, KJ. So I wanted to show this clip because I think it's a good example of, of KJ running the RPO so well, even though he gave the ball, right? It's not him running the ball, but, uh, you know, you got to be able to read that as well. So let's just break this down real quick so we can see what we're looking at. <clears throat> so you got Burks coming in motion right here, and then when you get the backer out of position, so you have 5v5, and we're going to see KJ is able to read this defender here and make a good read here to give the ball. And once we... Uh, look the, at the behind the center angle, you'll be able to see the, the read as well. So we already established 5v5, kind of give, and then when Burks goes into motion, that bumps uh, the backer out even more here. And so you're going to see uh, who Jefferson is reading. He's reading number eight right there. So the rule here when, you, when you're running this, uh, this little scheme is if you can see the DN of the backer's numbers, then you are going to give it, right? It means he's playing the quarterback. If you can't see his numbers, you can just see his shoulder pad. Say if he took a few steps this way, then that's when the quarterback would keep it with the option to run or the option to throw it to, um, to Burks here. And so we see out of position, we got 5v5. And then the backer actually comes and make a good tackle over here. But just a good read by KJ. You can see his eyes right here. He sees the backer's numbers. He's giving the ball to the running back uh, as opposed to keeping it. Uh, and good tackle by the backer. If the backer doesn't make that tackle, then he's off to the races. So good example there of KJ giving the ball and running the RPO system to perfection. So an RPO uh, play here, but this time KJ keeps it and he throws it right. Uh, so we're going to break it down in, in, in detail. Let's watch it first. No one here for Burks ends up being a first down there. So... Great read by Cajun. Again, it comes back to a numbers game, right? We go here. So right now we got, once they once they motion this guy over here, we got one up top safety. We got six guys in the box. You can maybe even count seven, this guy creeping in. But regardless, six V5, so you know you're most likely not going to, uh, to, to, to run the ball, right? Because it's a numbers game. So with that said, you got one safety, so you know it's going to be either cover three or cover one, uh, or depending, you know, it might be one thing field side, one thing boundary side. Regardless, though, KJ has a good idea of what's going on. It ends up being man here, and most likely this guy was supposed to go with Burks, I would assume. I don't want to put words in their mouth, but regardless, someone forgot to do their job and take Burks here. KJ does a good job reading here, knowing this guy's here, right? It's a, but as opposed to running, he knows no one's back here. No one followed Burks, able to dump it off uh, for a big play. I don't even remember what down it was, but long story short, uh, no one went with Burks. It's a numbers game with 6v5, not to mention, ah, is it not loading? Okay, here we go. Uh, ah, come on, load, load, load. Here we go. Boom, so KJ read it. Actually, pretty good job by the defender there. He played everything perfectly. If there was someone that was taking Burks, then this would have been a great play by Bama's defense, but no one took Burks. Creative play by the OC, by Browles, and then KJ runs it perfectly for a first down. So another run here by KJ, and I'm not sure if this was technically an RPO or it might have just been a QB design run here that they set up here. And you can tell that by one thing, the pulling, ah, they pull the they pull the guard in the tackle? I think so. So maybe KJ had to read, maybe not. I think the only way we would know is if we were in the meeting room or we knew what Browles said. But regardless, you're going to see right off the bat, Guard and tackle both pull. So it's like a QB counter. We would call this essentially, right? So guard and tackle both pull. It's actually a good read by the backer because he sees the guys pulling. They come block, block, big job or big lane for KJ to get up field for a first down here. So maybe there was a read involved. Maybe there wasn't. Uh, but regardless, if you just kind of want to 
know a little bit X's no stuff. A lot of times whenever you have these pulling guards here or pulling tackles, it's a quarterback design run. Maybe he was reading Will Anderson, maybe he wasn't, but just a good run by KJ regardless. Uh, and then maybe a, a, some things to take away from if the linemen are pulling, maybe it's more indicative of the quarterback keeping the ball. So a good keep here by KJ. Again, not going to break it down too much with the Texas clips because since we did so much of that with Alabama, just showing another example, we're going to see people bite in, keeps it, breaks the tackle by the backer, then is able to get upfield for a first down there. So another good read by KJ. We can see that the defender, you can't see his numbers, right? When he comes in. Here we go, here we go, here we go. I know I said the Texas clips would be quick. Uh, I apologize. I right, just watch. He comes in. Can't see his numbers. He's a shoulder pads. He's too far inside. KJ keeps. Not able to get out in time. Ends up being a big play for KJ. Running that offense very well. So this play is actually right after the play we just watched. Uh, another great R uh, RPO play. Able to throw it there for a good play there. Ends up being another first down. Watch it from behind the center too. I believe that's to Burks. Yep. Could we read, yep, backers out of position, able to get the ball to Burks quick. So here's a QB draw on third and 16. They got, I think, 15 and a half yards, and KJ converted on a QB sneak after this. Like one guy missed, gets up field, boom. I know they're playing way off coverage, but still, the KJ's ability to, to, to run was, was huge in this offense. I don't want to neglect that by the fact I'm saying, because he's such a good passer, that opened up things. Um, but we did want to show a few clips of him running the ball. Makes this guy miss in the open field. No big deal. Puts the head down. Picks up a few more yards. So just a big part of his game, running the ball as well. Something I definitely wanted to at least show because it's a big reason why he is successful in this offense. So this play literally just, I think, two plays after the play we just watched. KJ running it again and again. It's not a design run. He's looking. No one's open right off the bat, right? Coverage up top safety. So he comes up field. He got a backer kind of spying him a little bit and in coverage here. KJ runs and watch this. Makes contact at what? The 48-yard line, right? Makes contact with the backer at the 48-yard line and doesn't get brought down until what? The 44, we'll call it. So it takes the backer uh, four yards to officially bring him down, right? So again, KJ's ability to run. Has some wheels. Yeah, he's fast. But but the, the, the toughness here, right? So watch this. Boom. Keeps on driving, right, to get a few more yards there. So good run there by KJ and showing the ability to pick up some tough yards. So there's a big run from KJ here. Notice you, you spread everyone out. we got two receivers bottom of the screen, three receivers top of the screen. Have someone come in motion real quick. Uh, and then we see that they're able to get kind of Texas out of line here, right? we got 5v5. Uh, then we got, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 5v5. And then KJ's able to get up field. Back gets out of position. Boom. Big run there for a first down. Watch this angle here. Yeah, 5v5, big hole, get up field, mix a tackle, first down. So just to recap and give my opinion of why KJ is so successful in Kendall Browse's offense, so whatever my opinion is worth, I think it's because he's a damn good passer. And in doing that, it really opens up the run game, right? Like regardless what offense you're in, if you can push the ball downfield, you can't stack the box as much as you want to as a defense as a, as a defensive coordinator, and that's going to open up the run game. So if you compare, if you if you combine his ability to pass, and then the ability to actually run the RPO, right, make the right decisions and use his leg, something he's good at, then I think you have a, a great fit for this offensive scheme. And there's just a few reasons with a few plays, in my opinion, to kind of back it up of why he is so uh, successful in this offense. And if you want more film breakdowns, there's a bunch of, uh, of KJ film out there from multiple games. You can go back and, and find more examples of these type of plays. But I want to hear from you. What do you think about KJ Jefferson? Let us know in the comments below. We're obviously very high on him. And again, if you like this quarterback breakdown, I know it was a little lengthy for the longest we've done. But if you like this type of stuff, let us know, and we'll continue to put it out. And we'll see you next time on the next quarterback-related video.